What's up you guys, it's Graham here. So I'll just get right into it. CNBC just recently published an article saying that Robinhood, the stock trading platform, is now going to be offering checking and savings accounts. And my initial reaction to this was great. I mean, it kind of makes sense that they want to move into the banking industry. But then I saw something absolutely shocking and that is that they're going to be offering 3% interest on their checking and savings accounts. Now I gotta say that offering 3% is really nothing new and many local smaller banks offer way higher than this. But it's usually with a caveat that you have to make direct deposits into that account. It's only up to the first $5,000 or up to the first $10,000 and you have to make like five minimum debit card transactions a month and usually at that point it's just not worth the hassle. But I was very pleased to read that Robinhood checking and savings accounts come with no fees, minimum balances, or deposit requirements. And also I couldn't find anywhere on any of their fine print that there's any sort of account maximums, which basically means that if this were the case, I can go and put $250,000 with Robinhood and just sit back and collect 3% interest, which works out to be $625 a month. And as soon as I read that, I was honestly that meme where it's just like, shut up and take my money. That was me, until I started reading a little bit deeper because everything this good usually just comes with a bit of a catch. Now in the past, Robinhood has made some pretty significant moves for the sake of gaining market share and gaining future customers. And I initially found them because they began offering commission-free stock trading and literally everyone was talking about them. So of course I had to try it out and I actually really liked their service and I even mentioned it a few times here on the channel. So with that said, my experience so far with Robinhood is that they've been a very good service. But when it comes to them offering a 3% return on their bank accounts, I kept reading and kept reading and kept reading and kept researching all of the fine prints because this sounds a little bit too good to be true. And I was really intrigued because offering 3% right now is a lot. And what makes it even better is that their payments are paid out on a daily basis. Kind of reminds me a little bit of BitConnect. But again, on the surface, that beats out Ally Bank and pretty much every single other bank out there that pays out their interest on a monthly basis. So already this is sounding a little bit too good to be true. And as they say, you know, if it sounds good to be true, and that's why I kept reading and looking into this a little bit further. And this is where things start to get a little bit dicey. Now the big catch here is that Technically, Robinhood is not a bank, and you're actually opening up a brokerage account where your money in that account is not considered FDIC insured. And what that means is that every other bank out there is required to have FDIC insurance for up to the first $250,000. This means that if something happens to the bank or everyone goes and tries to withdraw all their money out of the bank at the same time, and the bank doesn't have enough to pay everyone back, the government is insuring your money to make sure that you will get your money back if anything ever happens to the bank. However, Robinhood doesn't do this because they're not a bank, they're a brokerage. So instead they offer you what's called SIPC insurance, which is SIPIC insurance. They offer you SIPIC insurance. Now the SIPC protects you as the consumer from up to $250,000 in cash or up to $500,000 in assets upon broker failures. This means that if Robinhood ever closed down due to financial difficulties and clients' money went missing, SPIC would step in and ensure that everyone had their money covered up to those two limits. And that's still generally safe for the most part. Now when Lehman Brothers went under in 2008, their customers received $92.3 billion back. But the main issue I see here is that SIPC will not cover your assets in the event that Robinhood breaks any laws, any regulations, or commingles your money, or if they ever use someone else's deposits from paying off your returns. And as we all know, that is what's called a Ponzi scheme. Now, obviously, that's a huge stretch of the imagination to ever suggest that Robinhood would ever run a Ponzi scheme. And that is never something that I am suggesting here. I'm just saying, if they did, in the one in a billion chance that for some reason they did do it, SBIC would not be covering your money in the event that you eventually lose it. Now another small risk that I see here is that the president and CEO of SIPC claims that SIPC protects cash that is deposited with a brokerage firm for one limited purpose, the purposes of purchasing securities. Cash deposited for other reasons would not be protected. Now, of course, Robinhood claims that because their checking and savings accounts are 
technically a part of their brokerage that could be used to purchase other investments, that they should be covered under SIPC like any other brokerage. And this is because they claim that people can go and buy assets and trade stocks with money that they have in their checking or savings accounts. And of course, that that is true. Now, whether or not they can actually make that argument to get SIPC insurance is yet to be determined. I think they're assuming that it is covered, but I'm a little bit worried about their definition of checking and savings accounts and whether or not SIPC actually agrees with this and agrees to insure it. Now, personally, this seems a little bit sneaky of Robinhood to call this a checking or savings account, but then characterize it as a brokerage account just to get the insurance. To me, this is really one or the other. It's either a brokerage account that offers a 3% interest rate or it's a checking or savings account. I don't really think it could be both, but you know, however they characterize it, whatever SIPC agrees with, by all means. Now, in order to understand this, it's first important to understand how banks make money. Now, typically when you give money to a bank, they pay you back a little bit of interest for the privilege of you lending them some money. Now, from there, banks will either use that money as collateral or invest some of that money in higher yielding investments to go and make them some money and also pay you back a little bit of interest. Now, when it comes to banks making money, they don't just stop there because now you're a customer of that bank and they're more likely to make money off you by giving you a mortgage, maybe a loan, maybe other services services that you pay for, and they make more money off you in the long term on the back end. And that's pretty much the banking industry in a nutshell. But with Robinhood offering a 3% return, it's pretty suspicious because this is way more than any other bank will offer without any other limits, especially when you consider that US Treasuries are paying below that on shorter term notes. So that begs the question. Where is all of this money coming from? The rate on a three-year US Treasury is sitting right now at 2.78%. Now, in terms of investment return, this is pretty much as safe as it gets, and Robinhood will end up investing a portion of your money in US Treasuries. This means that if they invest all of their money in US Treasuries, that they're gonna be running a loss by offering you a 3% interest rate, and this is a net loss to them of 0.22%. And the way I see it, and I'm sure the way they're seeing this too, is that this is really just the cost of customer acquisition. This is how much they believe one customer is worth to them long term. And again, their net loss is really only 0.22%, which they're likely to make up from profit on other services that they offer like margin trading or Robinhood Gold. And their genius reasoning to doing this is really just to take as much market share as quickly as they possibly can. That's it. They want people to talk about it. They want people to become Robinhood customers. And in order to do that, that, they have to do something very dramatic. Otherwise, no one would bother even talking about it. Like if they announce that they're doing this and offering like two and a half percent interest, no one would care. But if they offer three percent interest, everyone loses their minds. And now once they gain all of this market share and rates eventually increase over the next year, well, at that point, they're no longer gonna be at a loss and they will have taken a large portion of the market with them. And this is a great business move if it plays out like they think it will. And by offering something like this now, before anyone else is able to do this, they really get the first mover advantage. Now, here's what I personally think is gonna happen, and that is that the checking and savings accounts are just going to end up being a loss leader for the company. I also think that Robinhood is going to significantly underestimate just how many people are going to be signing up for these accounts. Right now, Robinhood says they have about 4 million accounts, but not all of them are funded. Now, we don't know exactly how many accounts are funded, but let's just say it's 70% of them, so that means that we have 2.8 million accounts with Robinhood that right now have money in them. Now, let's assume that of those remaining 2.8 million accounts, that 20% of them go and then open up a checking or savings account. This means that of that, 560,000 checking and savings accounts are going to be added. And by the way, I signed up for early access of this service just six hours after it was announced, and already it said I was number 253,000. So this could very well exceed those numbers I just mentioned. Let's also go a little bit further to say that they get an additional 300,000 users just from people reading about them that never wanted to use them to trade stocks, but they'll use them for the checking and savings accounts. That means that in total, they can see about 860,000 new accounts for checking and savings almost immediately. Now, let's even take it a step further and say that of these 860,000 accounts, that the average balance in them is $2,000. Well, guess what? That is $1.7 billion for Robinhood. And like our example earlier, let's just say they invest all of that in US Treasuries making 2.78% interest. They're gonna be taking a 0.22% loss on 1.7 billion 
million. This just means that for 860,000 accounts with an average balance of $2,000, their net loss the first year is only going to be $3.7 million. And that honestly doesn't really sound that bad considering that they've probably just grown their customer base substantially. Then as the Fed slowly increases interest rates and treasuries eventually yield beyond 3%, Robinhood then starts making a profit, and meanwhile, they've gained a large foothold in the market. Now, of course, you run the risk of them being a relatively newer company that's not FDIC insured, and you're taking all of that risk just to get an extra 1% when you compare that Ally Bank, Vanguard, or American Express currently offer a 2% interest rate. So the difference there is really only 1%. Is it, is it worth taking the risk to put it all on Robinhood? Maybe. I don't know. Am I going to do it? Maybe. I don't know. The real risk here is that if something happens to Robinhood and they break the law or they do something that isn't to regulation and SIPC says, you know what, we're not going to be covering that because we don't cover checking and savings accounts, we only cover brokerage accounts, and if that's the case, you might be screwed. We're also taking a little bit of a gamble with a company that was only started five years ago and hasn't really fully proven them. I mean, that's a very small risk considering what they've done so far, but it's definitely just a small consideration of mine. Now, the good news when it comes to Robinhood doing all of this is that it really forces other companies to be as aggressive as they possibly can and maybe be a little bit more competitive with what they have to offer. I think Robinhood doing this is really going to force other companies to follow suit and I think starting in January or February, we're going to see a lot of other online checking and savings accounts offering slightly higher interest just to try to be competitive with Robinhood. And for that, I say thank you very much, Robinhood, for doing that. So anyway, that's my thoughts on this and what I think is going to happen. If you guys agree, disagree, if you guys are going to be signing up for this, let me know down below in the comments. Would be curious to see what your thoughts are on this as well. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, smashed that like button and smash that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, smash your screen. Also, feel free to add me on Snapchat and Instagram. My posts are pretty much daily, so if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. And then finally, if you guys are interested, I have a private Facebook group in the description for anyone who's interested in real estate, real estate investing, real estate agenting, real estate mentoring, real estating, anything real estate. We have almost 12,000 members now in that group. It's amazing. So feel free to add yourself to that. Thank you again for watching and until next time.